Apple, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, industry giants like these all trust TSMC to power their products. And it's not hard to see why. Meet TSMC, the world's largest semiconductor chip maker and the firm behind 90% of the most advanced chips on the planet. All the automated devices in this facility, they travel 400,000 kilometers a day. To put that into context, that's 10 times around Earth. Founded by Morris Chang in 1987, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company has never taken its finger off the pulse of innovation. Otherwise known as the Silicon Architect, Chang's leadership saw TSMC become the world's first full-time semiconductor foundry, changing the world of chips forever. Check out Morris Chang in a conversation with NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang from 16 years ago. You went from almost nothing to um, you grew about, what, 10 times in one year, something like that? Well, we, we went from Five or six 20, times, anyway. 27 million to today, you know, $5 well, billion. Dollars no, I'm not talking years. about today. I'm talking about just one year. About five times a year. Yeah, five, five times. Best, yeah. Five times a year. So uh, if he had invested in 20% uh, uh, of, a, of a fab, if NVIDIA had invested in 20% and get only 20% of the fab's capacity, and then um, in, 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 in a few months, you know, you, you have outgrown the capacity you, 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 you are supposed to, to get. Then what will happen, you know? Well, I would be a, I would be a, a, I would be a, a peaceful, peaceful CEO running a, a $37 million company today. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, they, you, do, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be limited to that, but, but I think it's far better for a foundry company, for TSMC, to stay very flexible. We, we actually, back then, we were plowing all the money, all the profit, uh, back into uh, capacity uh, building, uh, uh, capital expenditures. So, so we were building, our, we're increasing our capacity very, very significantly every year. And uh, we, we were, extremely flexible to, to all the customers. Some customers, frankly, shrank. Uh, and uh, some customers, like you, grew rapidly. And uh, we, we just managed, uh, I mean, I, it was difficult. And uh, even now, looking back, uh, I wonder at uh, our skill of, um, of managing the total capacity. But the result was that we managed the total capacity uh, in such a way that we pleased most, we satisfied most of our customers. Well, we not only satisfied most of our customers, we pleased all of our important customers, those that, that grew very fast. Mm -hmm. And now, since introducing AI chip products for NVIDIA, TSM stock is through the roof. Sales have risen by more than 30% in the past year alone. Back in May of 2024, TSM's stock escaped a double bottom base with a buy point of 148.43. In fact, most of TSMC is owned by foreign investors and the company constitutes around 30% of Taiwan's stock exchange's main index people may not realize is that their largest markets uh, share sales by sales is in North America, even though it's got the word Taiwan uh, in their namesake or their their uh, their company logo. Uh, they do have exposure in manufacturing in Taiwan, which again uh, is a problem for for uh, for manufacturing just in case there's some issues with China. But the sales, uh, if you look in China, uh, are actually less than 10 percent. Going back last year, they were around 17 percent. So. This is a company that's actually strategically moving its sales and production away from Taiwan, which I think is a good strategy. And nonetheless, you have to consider volume of sales across multiple technology platforms, whether it's mobile, automotive chips, industrial chips, of course, NVIDIA's GPU chips. And the memory chips, uh, I think, are still in high demand, not just from an AI server data center and cloud infrastructure standpoint, but I also think from a PC standpoint, you know, we're moving into that cycle where we're, we're talking about AI being implemented or integrated into PCs 
uh, you know, at, from the shelf. And, and this is essentially going to cause another uh, revamp or recycle higher for PC. So I think TSM, broadly speaking, is just well positioned. It's not a company that's generating huge profit margins like NVIDIA because they don't necessarily have the pricing power, but it's a company that generates so much revenue in terms of its volume. And I think that's what you have to consider as this stock is hitting new highs, but it's doing so in a steady capacity. But what exactly are AI chips? And why are they the center of conversation in the world of tech? Let's start by looking at a traditional semiconductor, which is like the brains of electronic devices that control the flow of electricity. Now when AI enters the mix, this brain gets one hell of an IQ boost. AI semiconductors can perform numerous computational tasks while learning and getting smarter every day. Ever since TSMC brought the first pure integrated circuit to the world, the tech giant quickly cemented their presence as an icon of innovation. And that grandeur stands unmatched today. They remain the world's biggest IC foundry who were there at the dawn of the semiconductor industry and are still blazing its trail today. Based in Taiwan, and so Taiwan plays an absolutely irreplaceable role in all of the world's tech sector, but especially in the manufacturing of the chips that AI requires. Yeah, and I want to just zone in on NVIDIA here as well, because it has really become a leader in the design of AI chips of late. And you can see that reflected in a huge share price spike. How has it achieved that jump? And do you think it can hold on to its lead? Over a decade ago, NVIDIA realized that the types of chips it specialized in, which were initially used for computer graphics and video games, could be repurposed to make AI training more efficient and more capable. And so for a decade, NVIDIA has been investing not only in better chips, but also in better software around these chips. And it's put itself at absolutely the center of the AI ecosystem. Today, 90% or so of the world's most advanced AI systems are trained using NVIDIA's chips. And as all of the world's biggest tech companies, as well as governments, have poured tens of billions of dollars into building out the AI infrastructure and the data center capacity that's needed to run AI systems, most of this money has gone to buying NVIDIA's chips, which is why today NVIDIA is one of just a small handful of companies valued at more than a trillion dollars. Try as they might, no semiconductor company can compete with the original industry leader who powered the 80s and 90s, ushered us into the new millennium, and continues to power the digital age today. In fact, TSMC has built such a formidable global presence that it has literally become impossible for them to fail. The demand is so huge, but the supply is limited. And the Rapidus is trying to take advantage of that and uh, try to, you know, provide as, as an alternative provider. There's discussion highlighting the growing collaboration and potential integration between Taiwanese and Japanese chip industries, particularly focusing on TSMC's investments in Japan and the rapid development of Rapidus in Hokkaido. The partnership aims to strengthen the semiconductor ecosystem between the two countries. The integration can lead to mutual prosperity through a close supply chain collaboration. Taiwan's expertise in IC design, combined with Japan's strengths in AI and self-driving cars, can create a powerful synergy. As electric cars become more popular, the demand for IC design capabilities increases, and merging Taiwan's design capabilities with Japan's manufacturing prowess can drive the development of AI systems. For more of the latest AI news in the digital age, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in our next video on NVIDIA's 2024 AI event highlight.